right. Wishers ready? All right. We'll open up this meeting of the Yamhill County Board of Commissioners formal, formal and informal session for June 25th of 2020. Uh, and we'll begin with the flag salute. And um, Mr. Sarah, would you like to lead us? Okay, Thank I was you. gonna ask Carolina, but I realized I didn't prep her for that. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Move on to item C, which is public comment. And due to COVID-19 and social distancing requirements, we encourage anyone wishing to submit general public comment or comments on agenda items to do so in written format via email at bocinfo at co.emhill.or.us or by mail at 535 Northeast 5th Street in McKinville, Oregon 97128. Any comments received prior to the meeting will be shared with the Board of Commissioners and submitted to the record. And Carolina, okay, let's move on to item D, which is the consent agenda, and we have none today. Move on to item E, and old, which is old business. And item E1 is consideration of a letter to the governor's office regarding the governor's authority as it relates to ORS or to Oregon revised statute 401.165. I also want to acknowledge that, um, welcome back Commissioner Olson. Welcome back. Since Commissioner Starrett had to be the one to remind or to observe last week that you weren't here. Yes. I get to observe that you're back. Well, the meeting could have been much fun if I wasn't here. It wasn't. I didn't think so. <laughs> We had to work together. <laughs> it was a good thing. There was nothing that required a third vote. Yeah, I looked at the Oh, yeah, you got the letter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I looked at the letter, and I thought it conveyed um, the spirit of what you and I discussed Correct. last week. Do you? I agree. And yeah. I want to thank our county council, uh, Christian, uh, for, for doing this because I think he got all of the elements without some of the extraneous um, verbiage that the other letters from other counties had. So this this really did capture just, you know, just a, a simple respectful request for um, more information on the renewal of each, yeah. um, uh, each executive order. Yeah, and I think that um, I, I, as I read it, I was thinking about how, because I received a few emails that were uh, mad at me for questioning the governor's authority. And I, I tried to explain that um, m kind of my perspective on it was one of, um, uh, and I think we talked about this a little bit, um, but I tried to reemphasize for folks that um, I think it's really important when there's such sweeping authorities um, to um, for the governor to just simply explain to people, um, especially the general public, you know, the three of us hear a lot of the rationales behind different decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the, the general public should hear that from her too. So. And also I think it's important for us to remember that we have a governor in office now that perhaps people agree with. If, mm -hmm. we, have, if we have those powers while you agree with a, a particular governor right. or, or super majority, remember that that might change. You also wanna have fail safes and feedback for a governor um, that perhaps you don't agree with. Right. So it really is a protection for the people and that we as county commissioners are not responsible necessarily for for uh, advocating for any state agency, but advocating for our constituents. Yeah, yeah, I no, appreciate that. Yeah, I, appreciate I, I thought, you know, when I first read the, uh, there, which I thought very well done, um, what first thing I looked at, I said, is there really any of a, partisan tone in this other, whether yeah. it be liberal or conservative. Mm -hmm. And I thought there wasn't. I thought this is just something, you know, that mm -hmm. politics stay out of, that this is just what we like to see from the governor itself. Yeah. That's fine with the letter. Yeah. And it's good to remember that, that the way this is structured is that, you know, Oregon is one of only six states that have it set up to where you don't have legislative oversight on renewal of executive orders to the degree. I mean, it could change and that is up, obviously up to the legislature, but because that's the case, I think we really need to keep eyes on, on this. So mm -hmm. anyway, thank you, Christian, for doing yeah, this. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I also commented to Christian out in the hallway that I appreciated that there were no like buzzy words no. or anything. It was just straight like, hey, this is, I, I think it conveyed what you and I talked about. Right. All right. Um, so I would. I buried my agenda. I apologize. 
Yes, Commissioner. And I, I would move approval of item E1, which is the consideration of sending this letter to the governor's office regarding the governor's authority as it relates to Oregon revised statute or ORS 401.165. Okay, thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item E1. We move on to other business, which is uh, F. And uh, item F1 is consideration of approval of an agreement between the Yamhill County Sheriff's Office and the City of Amity for police services in the amount of $277,824.57, effective July 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021, and in the amount of $299,008.18, effective July 1 of 2021 through June 30th of 2022. And do we have any questions? I think that the... I think the sheriff did a great job of explaining everything and providing us with the support for that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I will. I will um, make a motion that we approve the agreement between Yamhill County Sheriff's Office and the City of Amity, which is item number F one. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F one. Item F2 is consideration of approval and agreement between the Yamhill County Sheriff's Office and the City of Dayton for police services in the amount of $161,259.80, or sorry, excuse me, eight cents, effective July 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021. I'll also recommend approval okay. between the Yamhill County Sheriff's Office and the City of Dayton for police services. That's item F2. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F2. Item F3 is consideration of approval of an agreement between the Yamhill County Sheriff's Office and the City of Lafayette for police services in the amount of $323,785.72, effective July 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021, and in the amount of $348,876.02, effective July 1st of 2021, through June 30th of 2022. Mr. Chair, I would move approval of item F3. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. The record show unanimous approval of item F3. Item F4 is consideration of approval of an agreement between the Yamhill County Sheriff's Office and the City of Wilhelmina for police services in the amount of $299,654.95, effective July 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021. And I would move approval of item F4. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F4. Item F5 is consideration of approval to submit an application for the fiscal year 2020 through 2021 emergency management performance grant, also known as the EMPG, due July 8th of 2020. And Commissioner Sherry, did you have anything you'd like to add? Just that this is what we do every year and I would move approval of item five. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F5. Item F6 is consideration of approval of a change in business terms in an agreement between Yamhill County Emergency Management and Everbridge, which is board order 17-256 effective July 7th of 2020 through July 6th of 2021. And I would just say that this is just a, a, a change in the, in the contract terms and I would move approval of item six. Yes, thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F6. Item F7 is a consideration of approval of a quote and a purchase of Exagrid hardware and licenses for backup data storage from tech heads in the amount of $39,828. And there was a memo in the board packet, but Commissioner uh, Olson, do you have any? Yeah, I, I, I've looked at this product, product before, and it is one of the better products out there and with what's happening with cities and counties and public agencies being hacked and scammed and everything. I think it's very important that we have a very good, uh, robust backup system. So if we should need to recover, we haven't yet. But since we should need to recover, that we have, we have the capability to do so very quickly. Okay. Did you have anything you would like to add? No, I would just say that we we currently have backup systems in place, and that this is our transition to continually make sure we're on the forefront when it comes to our technology, just like the commissioner was saying. Yeah. Uh, so this is part of a larger project to make sure that we have the resources to make sure we 
back to one of our systems. Great. Ken and I have been talking about this. Um, we were still working out a couple of the final details with the provider. Um, so if the board would, I'd ask that you approve this subject to the final review and approval of County Council's office. Then I'll work with Ken and Shane and make sure that we get this wrapped up here, hopefully no later than the end of this week. Okay. I know there's an immediate need to get this moving. Right. So I, I would move approval of item seven <clears throat> with the uh, provision that we will, this would be subject to County Council's uh, over re revision. Perfect, thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Record show unanimous approval of item F7 with that modification. Item F8 is consideration of approval of the proposed 2020 through 2021 Health and Human Services Behavioral Health Usual and Customary Rates, Public Health Clinic Rates, and the environmental health fees effective July 1st of 2020. And Commissioner, do you have anything to add? And this is something that is done every year where the rates are adjusted based on mm -hmm. uh, different costs in staff time, different costs in various funding streams. So this is just basically uh, sort of a housekeeping update that um, has also been through um, Board of, of Health Review. I saw that little stamp at the top of each of the, the sections. So, yeah, so I would, that was I would, nice to see you. Nice. Uh, I would move approval of item F8. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? The record show unanimous approval of item F8 and good details in the board packet. Item F9 is consideration of approval of amendment number 12 to the agreement between Yamhill County Health and Human Services and the Oregon Health Authority, which is board order 19 222 in the amount of $1,012,470 for public health services effective July 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021. And I'm going to uh, turn this over to you again. This is going to be a habit in the next section here. So. It's, it, what it is, it's just modifying the program yeah. element. And also OHA is going to be seeking reimbursement from FEMA. So that adjusts that. Uh, and that is why we have to, uh, and this would be, the allocations would be for the prescription drug overdose um, program as partially estimated. Okay. So I would move approval of item F9. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? The record show unanimous approval of item F9. Item F10 is consideration of approval of amendment number nine to the agreement between Yamhill County Health and Human Services and the Oregon Health Authority, which is the same board order, board order 19-222, in the amount of $439,156 for public health services slash COVID-19 monitoring retroactive to March 27th of 2020 through December 30th of 2020. And these are funds that come through the state mm -hmm. to public health, and that is what we're approving. Wonderful. It's Federal good to funding see. to the state, yes, exactly. to the county. Yes, and it's great to see this on the agenda. So yes. um, you, so, you moved approval? No. I will didn't. move approval. Okay. I will move approval of item F10, approval Perfect. of Amendment 9 to the agreement between Health and Human Services and OHA, Board Order 19-222. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? The record should unanimous approval of item F10. Item F11 is consideration of approval of Amendment Number 1 to the agreement between Yamhill County Health and Human Services and Yamhill Valley Treatment, DBA Provoking Hope which is board order 19-277 for the operation of the peer outreach needle slash syringe exchange program in the amount of $56,839 effective July 1st of 2020. And commissioner? And commissioners, you'll remember during budgets as our administrator pointed out that the funds that were allocated for last year's allocation for this program were backed out. And the mm -hmm. money for this program for this year has come from the CCO. But there are additional funds that were requested on pay for performance dollars of the CCO that were also approved. Okay. And um, so that is where we're looking at. That has been funded strictly through the CCO. Bravo. This, it seems like a great public health thing. The only for that. clarification I would mention is the funds that were approved in, in this current year budget were general discretionary funds, and those were the funds that was a one time yes. increase of discretionary revenue, and now those are the funds that uh, were not allocated. To that's right. Yes. Right. And yes. that's thank basically you. what you said. I knew what you meant, but thank you for clarifying. But he for the said record. it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. It was tracking both of you. Okay. Thank you. Well, I would move approval of item F11. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? 
that the record show unanimous approval of item F11. Item F12 is consideration of approval of a grant agreement 34211 between Yamhill County and the Oregon Department of Transportation Rail and Public Transit Division, also known as 5311, 5311, for COVID-19 related expenses as defined in the CARES Act in the amount of $813,023, effective May 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021. And this looks familiar, so. Uh, um, Mr. Chair, I I'd say since we just approved this as the uh, board of directors of the YCTA and it comes to us as the board of commissioners and I would move uh, approval. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed same sign? Let the record show unanimous approval of item F12. And thank you, Commissioner. And if I may, Commissioner, oh, please. just to clarify on the, the CARES Act funding, mm -hmm. so to alleviate any potential confusion, it's not, there was specific funds for the CARES Act that went straight to transit mm -hmm. for transit-related operations, and this is not related to other CARES Act funding that we've requested from the state. That is a really good clarification. It's all CARES Act, mm -hmm. but there were certain elements that went out to jurisdictions, and this was one that went specific to transit. Similar to how there was the, the money that was set aside, I think through the FCC? Uh, for um, telehealth, uh, yeah. which was like a grant that we had also we applied for. Right. Yeah, we got that one. Yeah. Another benefit is you probably saw there is zero local match. Yes, I did notice that. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is going to, I think, help a lot. Yeah. 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 CTA. Right. And I noted that I observed that one of the things that we'll go to is um, covering that um, the decreased revenue because of yeah. keeping um, the 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 fee for writing it yeah. is still zero. Yeah, there's quite a bit of flexibility. Yeah. Unlike the other CARES funding that won't cover lost revenue this one. Yes, I actually read that with great interest because of that. I, I knew, but right. it was good to have it confirmed. All right, thank you. And we already voted on that, right? Oh, you yes, just clarified it afterwards. I was just like, <laughs> All right, we will move on to item F13, which is consideration of approval of a quote for the purchase of one Braun Ability Dodge Grand Caravan from the low bidder creative bus sales in the amount of $48,686. Again, Mr. Chair, since we uh, voted in our school list as the white CTA Board of Directors, I would uh, move that the Board of Commissioners approve the quote for the purchase of the uh, Braun Ability Dodge van for $48,686. Great. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. The record sheet unanimous approval of item F13. Item F14 is consideration of approval of the transfer of appropriation authority and funds uh, in the 2019 2020 budget from 010 uh, 002 699 01 which I know is a longer version of the 1002 budget, uh, discretionary, to 010-039-695-99 uh, departmental, $20,500, uh, that's the total for that move, and to 010-039-695-16 uh, in the amount of uh, $9,500 for the total amount of 30000 to cover unfunded mandate litigation slash appeal and unanticipated medical examiner expenses. That was a mouthful, but, yeah, but I think we all know what it means. So. And I'll just share some more, you know, uh, 1039s are non-departmental, but uh, a lot of times where there's expenses that aren't necessarily attributed to one particular department, um, you know, and this is one that every year, we oh, there's unanticipated charges or costs and, and the only revenue that they come into this fund is discretionary revenue. Mm -hmm. So when we end up getting the, the bills uh, for the sick leave litigation that is, is, you know, um, is what's being covered here. And then also uh, medical examiner that has been uh, unfortunately running uh, pretty high uh, mm -hmm. for this year. That was both driven by the contract renewal with our with our contract medical examiner, but then also with the uh, the billing that we've been receiving right. the activity with that account. So yeah. I think just making sure that well we stay within the appropriation authority for that fund for this year. Right. Commissioner Steele, thank you. Commissioner Steele, thank you. No. No. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I would move approval of item F14 then. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. The record shade unanimous approval of item F14. Item F15 is consideration of approval of a blanket refund order authorizing the tax collector to issue lawful refunds to taxpayers effective July 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021. And Commissioner Olson, do you have anything that yeah, anything this like is that? something that we do every, every year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so every refund that uh, we're authorized to make that doesn't have to come in front of the board that the tax assessor has the authority to issue, to issue those refund checks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought there was a great memo in the packet yes. explaining that yeah. too. Yes. Okay. Would you like so to I'll move thank consideration? You. Uh, or I move that we approve the blanket refund order authorizing tax collector, tax collector to issue lawful lawful refunds to taxpayers, and this will go from July 1, 2020, to June 30, 2021. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. The record show unanimous approval of item F15. And somewhere, Assessor Worf's like doing the. Yeah. Item F16 is consideration of approval of proposed budget changes to the approved 2020 through 2021 budget as presented by the budget officer. All right. I believe you all have a handout that's been provided with the slides to list, and it's also in the packet. It's just so much easier here to not have to go. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, so we had some requests. This is uh, pretty typical as we go through the budget um, adoption process. Uh, we start the process uh, building our budgets in January, and, and there, at times when we start getting close to the actual budget adoption to happen, uh, there's, you know, changes that need to be made because we're seeing, um, you know, having a clear picture whether it's revenues or projects not being completed as anticipated before the the budget year we want to make sure we have sufficient appropriation in the new budget year to cover that uh i'll just clarify that oregon budget law allows um that we can make as long as the changes are less than 10 percent we can we can make modifications to an individual fund all of these changes do not um, reflect any changes of 10 percent or more to any of the funds listed and i'll just go through these really quickly the first two that you're going to see is the uh, sheriff's office uh, for the jail under 1041. You may recall that they have submitted a grant uh, that's being administered by CJC. This is to make sure that we have a place holder um, for a grant from appropriation authority if awarded. So that's what this is doing. It's recording both the revenue and the expense for that grant that was approved by the, that grant application was approved by the board. Uh, the other modification is the sheriff had asked of reducing their ending balance in the jail budget and moving $75,000 into a capital line and they need to replace their central radio system within the jail and so it's with the current project the camera system it seems logical to also address that in the next year. Okay. He hadn't planned on doing it this year, but he's going to move the funds in there, so he can do that this year. Uh, the other changes are in 4041 in jail capital. This originally, they had hoped that the, the camera replacement project would have been completed by June 30, but there's been several delays, some of it related to COVID-19 and some, you know, getting contracts and materials and things for that project. And so what you, the numbers you see here is what they're anticipating is going to be the carryover into the next budget year. We wanted to make sure we have sufficient, uh, you know, so that'll modify the, the ending balance and the, the beginning balance for next year, the beginning balance to make sure we have those funds available to finish that project in the jail for those remaining phases. Uh, Community Corrections Fund 21, the two changes are related to the same grant that I mentioned that the jail had also applied for. Uh, they, and they did not, it, that, again, that application process opened up pretty late in the budget process. And so this is to make sure that they have sufficient appropriation and expense authority should those grant funds be awarded that we can do the project. And then the last item, uh, which is pretty lengthy, HHS and with how, you know, that's one that there's a lot of adjustments that they have to make. And you'll see a memo that Lindsay put together with all the, the changes. 
uh, they have a lot of things, with, especially with how diverse their revenue schedules are with the various IPAs and then also the fees for service and, and, and the services provided. And so these are a lot of changes that they're making to HHS that we did. Just so it, it's more uh, accurately reflects in the budget document of what they're anticipating, what expenditures and revenues are going to apply for next year. And those are the changes uh, for your consideration yeah. for the for uh, these changes would be incorporated upon adoption into version four of the adopted budget. Perfect. Commissioners, do you have well the one question I have is I I appreciate all the work that the uh, sheriff and Lindsay and Cameron put in this when I I said this last year too. When I look at health and human services and all the programs and we do and all the Fat work that just goes into just the budgeting portion of health and the revenues and expenses. I think Lindsay just does an excellent, excellent job. Uh, it's more detail than we you get, but this one really is a great doc, great document. So. Yeah, and I would also highlight uh, Christina. I was just going to say that <laughs> she's doing some heavy lifting these days. Yeah, you know it does present some challenges. You know, with the the budget process, and because the budget process is essentially. Most people see it as a six month process, but it's a lot longer than that for, for the budget officer. But, you know, there's some challenges in, in, in what we want to make sure is uh, building that transparency into our budget to make sure it's accurately reflecting uh, what expenses and revenues are going to look like for the next year. And also making sure that we have sufficient appropriation authority to continue to operate and provide the services that we're doing. So, um, perfect world. I, you know, with hope that two months ago we wouldn't be making this many changes, but unfortunately, uh, we really need to, and it's just the the nature of Oregon budget law versus trying to operate in county. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that we had this is such a moving target for health and human services and public health. Yes. If you look at our contracts with the school-based health clinics and we haven't had school in session, how does that impact our contract with them? Yeah. What about the uh, reduction in 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 in-person caseload and how that's being built? So there's so many different pieces and I I really do appreciate uh, Christina and Lindsay and her whole team because it's such a jigsaw puzzle. I mean, jigsaw puzzle. A thousand pieces. A thousand pieces. And, and I guess the one last item that I would call out, the one thing we have not seen yeah. here is um, the CARES Act that we're currently applying for. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many questions about what exactly is going to be made available to the county, I didn't feel comfortable building that into the budget. Yeah. And I anticipate that depending on the amounts, that once we get a clearer picture from the state and the governor's office of what the county shares are going to look like, that we may need to do potentially a supplemental budget early into the new budget year to incorporate those changes to be able to access that. Right now, I didn't have sufficient data to necessarily make those modifications yeah. at this point. And so I'm essentially just kind of kicking that can down the road a little bit that we can have that discussion. And once I see what we're actually going to have made available to us, then we can you know, better be able to determine whether or not something that a budget's going to be required or something or a simple board action. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Well, I would move, unless there are further comments, I would move approval of item F16, which is consideration of approval of proposed budget changes to the approved 2020 through 2021 budget as presented by the budget officer. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F16. Item F17 is consideration of the approval of resolution 20-06-25-1 adopting the Yamhill County budget for fiscal year 2020 through 2021. Comments? You have it in the board packet? It's um, such a, no, go ahead. Well, okay. Please. So we have a resolution. I think the important part is to recognize that it, the resolution does a couple things. One, it, it adopts the budget. The second part is it sets appropriations for the year. And then the third part is it sets a tax rate uh, for the year. Um, yes. The changes in the resolution do reflect the numbers that you just okay. acted on. I was mm -hmm. 
wanted to be prepared because of the timing of it. So the numbers that are reflected in the resolution do reflect the changes that you just Thank you. Oh yeah, and you have them in here. That's right. Okay. Yes. And I would just add that yes. uh, this is a basically from start to finish, it's a six month process and, and it just takes up the lion's share of, of our administrator and our department heads and mm -hmm. And, and all the, the whole finance team. So I just want to say um, the gratitude for the endless hours of sitting there night after night, weekend after weekend, doing this work. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. and, and I would move approval of item 17. <clears throat> and I, I second your thanks. It's, no, it's a resolution. It's a resolution. I, I remember it. It's very exciting. All right. Uh, no, we I'll, would not want to adopt the budget. It's just a resolution because that would be a ceremonial act only. <laughs> so it's a board order. So it has legislative effect. We're good. Okay. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F17. And if I could just. Yes. You know, I just want to uh, start to appreciation for our three budget committee members and the work that they did um, in helping to build this budget and then also recognize uh, my, my budget team, you know, uh, Justin, Jennifer, Mike, uh, and, you know, and assisted greatly with building this budget. And then also the various departments and offices that also contribute and, and put in a lot of work and effort in, in getting this budget put together and making sure that uh, um, one that we're getting the budget in place, building the budget, making their presentations on their apps. There's, there is a lot of work that goes into that, but it, it's definitely a team effort. So, thank you. You know, one thing yes. for, I guess I won't, I won't be here next year, but one thing that would be interesting is you, you take, uh, it'd be interesting knowing if you take all the touch points like you and accounting and Mike Barnhart and Justin and all the department heads, knowing it's a six month product, you know, we're, at least a six month process, how many actually man hours are spent in the budget process? Because like they always said about statutory accounting, statutory accounting is uh, general account, gap accounting, mm -hmm. not wrong. You know, because that's what statutory accounting is. And it's much more complicated. I've, I've talked to people that have their own business and don't budget. They said, well, you just have to do this and just have to no, I said statutory accounting and budgeting is much different than general accounting, mm -hmm. and uh, they're not they're not even similar. So I think, but you know how much you own did we put in? Six hundred hours, seven hundred hours. How many men? How many man days or man hours were actually? Then I, I'm not asking you to go back and figure that out. Mm -hmm. But I good thing. <laughs> well, when you put it like in when you're done here, go. Right. But when you put it in your perspective, that. Yeah. It is a tremendous amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because of the people that do this why I think every year our budget looks so good. Yeah. It's absolutely. Put in work. And I always remind people that it's complicated because um it's uh taxpayer money, but agreed. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, uh, I mean, I think that the the checks and the balances and the, the the transparency and the hearing and the hearing and the hearing and the public comment and the public comment, um, I know that it's complicated and complex, but um, it's, we're, we're, we're taking people's money and then using it to provide services. So. I think the one thing that uh, citizens, you know, I'd like to see get a little bit more educated is they don't realize that, you know, as big as our HHS budget is, Oh, put that money someplace else. They don't realize that most of that money is restricted money. We can't do it anyway. Right. It has nothing to do with the general taxes. It's like property taxes. Like, no, we can't say. You know, if state gives us a million dollars to support our HHS programs, we can't say no. We're only going to spend five hundred thousand. Use five hundred thousand. And I don't think people really understand that hmm. very well. So anyway, oh, that's my own comment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. For Good this job, this step. Well done. This step. Yes. At least at least until the next revised budget. <laughs> and let's not forget that Carolina is sort of <laughs> having to pick up all these pieces and make them somehow and carry uh, mm -hmm. and make them make sense to us and sit through these these budget hearings and and then try to coalesce them. So 
Thank you yeah. for that. So we them well. Yeah. Well, I will ask us to flip the page if you're following along because there is one more uh, mm -hmm. item under F, F um, and that would be item F18, which is consideration of extending the emergency declaration in Yamhill County as previously approved, which was board order 20-93. And again, another thing that, that Christian has brought before us. I was a busy man. I would Very. just add that the, 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 it was already previously extended one time under board order 20-105 yes. through June 30th. And what's before you now would extend it for an additional month through the end of July. Great. I want to see it next month at the end of August, probably. Well, I think it makes sense at this point. Yeah. yeah. I do too. Yeah, well, I would move approval then. Uh, are, are there more comments? I, just, um, I would move approval of item F18. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F18. Aye. Right. Aye. And I'm okay, it's just the <laughs> end of the paper. That's all, the end of the list. So I have one more item that I'd like to bring before the board for consideration. Thank you. And especially as it relates to the action that the board just took. That's right, because it also um, ended. Yeah. Yes, the, the current temporary COVID-19 development commuting policy was set to expire uh, June 30th. Uh, you, you, as you'll see in the memo, you, you've already done um, a couple or one extension mm -hmm. for that policy in order to make sure that we just have this in place um, for sufficient time uh, what I'm asking is to modify the current temporary COVID-19 telecommuting policy to expire on September 1st 2020 or upon termination of the state of emergency declared by the governor of Oregon, whichever occurs first. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a modification of language. Instead of doing 30 day extensions, I'm just throwing out there, I'm going to ask that we just go ahead and keep it in place yeah. and, and possibly revisit it in the end of August. Would that, would that necessarily mean that uh, even though the policy is in place, that we're not requiring that? Kind of work we can actually invite people to come back if they're Correct. comfortable I, I think the one mm -hmm. important clarification on the the telecommuting policy uh, is this policy was not a mandate to departments to telework yes. this policy was in place to help facilitate departments to accommodate telework requests or try to get as many folks as possible um, teleworking mm -hmm. uh, you know, so as I put in here, we're still in the early uh, stages. Many of the offices and departments are looking at because we're coming into certain times of the year and seasons where uh, we need to start opening up some operations for some in-person uh, services to be provided. Uh, and also recognizing that there still continues to be certain operational areas that just doesn't uh, really it doesn't allow for teleworking. So what this policy does is it creates a framework and the request process for employees and for departments to facilitate telework requests as they come in. But, it's, but again, it's not a mandate to telework. Yeah, got it, okay. Well, uh, there aren't any more, oh. I'm not just gonna make a bunch. Okay, we were making eye contact. Yes. Which one of us is going to get to it first? And well, we should have been looking that way. Let the record show that Commissioner Olson needs to go like this. Um, okay, um, and should we call that item F19 or we're just good? Okay, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Let the record show unanimous approval of item F19. Great, thank you very much. Move on to item G, which is public hearings, and we have none today. Move on to item H with announcements and commissioners. Yes, I have show and tell. So do you remember the Dayton home that we were never really allowed yes. to tour the... We were ready and And not. then they said, no, you can't tour it because of the COVID situation. So um, the house is closed as of last week. This is the house that 
housing authority we gave to the housing or we sold to the housing mm -hmm. authority they rehabbed it and um gave it to sold it to a uh, a couple so you're going to see the before and after pictures yeah. i've sent them digitally um uh, but that's an example of, of, and then the family at the very end, you'll see this family standing in front of the house. So this is an example of, the it's the same house where you see it. It's like, yeah, let me, I would move in there. It's very cool. cool. So um, excited about that. Yeah. And then, and they're grateful that they had that, that option. So just, just to see that when we do these types of arrangements, they have such a nice, happy ending so i wanted to yeah. share that and also the uh housing authority as i mentioned i think on a call mm -hmm. has received from additional funding to do foreclosure counseling right mm -hmm. now things are pretty much shut down yeah. but after june 30th they're going to be able to have more money to uh devote to that foreclosure avoidance counseling program through the housing authority and we'll get that information out and that really Great. is going to affect people of all income levels Yes. At this stage. So that's that's a, a good thing. Um, also, that fifty thousand dollars that I had uh, requested that the CCO uh, reimburse the county for for pay for, through pay for performance dollars for that sheltering program that yeah. we committed to. They have approved that. And so uh, we haven't gotten the check, but we did get the approval that they're going to do that. Thank you for working. And um, also. Um, just want to check on the amount that the CCO was spending on that non-emergent medical transport. You know, that really was a program that helps people, uh, you know, with medical appointments. Mm -hmm. And that was one that the program was, that the CCO was really struggling with because it was costing so much. But yeah. at this point, it's it's uh, $25,000 that the CCO has expended for that program. But I think because of the COVID situation, it's well worth it. I asked our health and human services director to include numbers of hospitalizations in her count. I'm always appreciative of how flexible she is with giving us these new numbers. Yeah. So she's including that. So right now we have one hospitalization, mm -hmm. which is is really, it's it's not good, but it's a, it's a wonderful example of, of where the county is. And um, what else did I want to tell you? And I think that's where I'll leave it now. Great. Thank you. you know, I, I'm often directing people to um, the, the HHS COVID page um, because of those great details. So, right. Yeah. Um, you know, just a couple of things with all the uh, video meetings we've been going through this week. I was on the, uh, the Wyoming Workforce Partnership had our board of directors uh, meeting, and now there is a grant available through WWP for uh, contract tracers oh, yeah. it's a contracted service and uh, it is being offered through uh sebeck who does a lot of that uh, contact tracing in their our our um four county area and uh, the southern oregon uh, coast um will have workforce partnership is using also going to use them and I guess it's a pretty good company that they go through and they contract and then the World Animal Workforce Partnership pays them to pays contract them. and mm -hmm. then they have it scheduled. And so okay, we have a hot spot here. And so if we need more tracers, they'd send them in here. Lincoln County, like right now, I think there's four in Lincoln County. But that is that is available until the funds are extended. Um, there's a problem with the employment. Uh, workforce services because employment division has been so busy um, processing claims that all of their workforce people that uh, that actually were involved with uh, employment services and getting people jobs and everything that's almost came to a complete standstill because mm -hmm. all of the extra uh, people of the employment division are actually processing claims. So mm -hmm. that's one of those bad things. Not enough people to process claims. So all the other work workforce services have basically been mm -hmm. set on the back burner. Um, and Mary, maybe you know this qu question in HHS. Mm -hmm. you are. On our contact trace tracers, on our train, do we have our own training or do we use the John Hopkins training trainer? I mean, how do we how do we train internally? My understanding is is that we are using existing employees right. for that and that they are 
trained based on the contact tracing that they do for communicable diseases in general through yeah. public health, unless I'm misinformed. I think that would be a great question for Lindsay Manfred um, or Amber, and I'd be happy to pose that follow-up question. Yeah, yeah because I know a yeah. lot of the county, a lot of counties in the state and others are using the uh, training, the contact training uh, method methodology through uh, John Hopkins University, and it gets it makes sure everybody that's doing whether you're in a county a city a state everybody that's getting uh, doing tracing is doing exactly the same thing. okay so you might want to ask uh ask lindsay about john hopkins or how they do it and that'd be interesting to find out mm -hmm. uh, just a couple more things gotta let my eyes come back into focus uh, i won't talk too much about the things that we're talking about at the regional solutions ERP meeting, but I'm sure Casey might have some things to say about that. One thing that did uh, <clears throat> came to last three or four weeks has come to uh, my attention is I think we need to have dinner with the approval of the other mm -hmm. commissioners sometime in the pretty near future to schedule whether it's a televideo what, mm -hmm. a work, for, uh, work group or a briefing mm -hmm. on rural broadband. Mm -hmm. I know Casey's working with um, Online Mac and I, I've been you have to yeah. mm -hmm. I've been working with the Oregon Broadband Office and said core has been working with them and Commissioner so, Pope and yeah, yeah so yeah. to get us all up to date so we're all on the same line because there is funding out there for some pretty big projects mm -hmm. and said core is looking at different funding and different projects and uh, supposedly I think AC online math if i remember they have like five projects ready to go they have five projects that are engineered yeah yeah are engineered yeah. basically ready to go i don't know what those five projects are mm -hmm. but um i think maybe in the next month or so we might if we have time we might want to have a work session just we get the people that are involved um <clears throat> either on a zoom or a teams teams conference mm -hmm. and just have a uh, conference so everybody's on the same Step because there is there broadband, broadband, uh, rural broadband for both telehealth and distant learning. Mm -hmm. Especially now, a lot of, like a lot of the schools are going to probably open up with online training. Yeah, that uh, the kids out in the rural areas, even some of the small towns, don't have access to where they can do that. And especially yeah. for telehealth, um, the telehealth platform is a great platform. I mean, they can't get in law of their patients because they don't have the access. So right, right. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to have Ken work on maybe one would be a time mm -hmm. I can tell them, talk to Ken, maybe Casey, you have some things or Mary has and who we should get on that work work session. Yeah. I imagine we'd do more or less like one of our town halls, but it would be specifically for rural rural men, broadband and yeah. Yeah, no, I think that would be good. Do you have well, I was just gonna, you know, um, add that uh, I think there's a, a, a couple items that are coming up for scheduling work sessions yeah. that we uh, we get on the calendar. Mm -hmm. I was no, I was actually looking through my notes. I was like, there's a work session that I'm supposed to bring up. No, because another session that relates to the budget adoption, as you know, uh, there were several um, community requests that were brought <laughs> forward as part of the. Um, budget process and the budget committee, mm -hmm. you know, none of them were approved, funds were moved or appropriated to, so the board can make decisions. But at the time, with it being early in the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of uncertainty, which we're still mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. but still we have funds um, available to discuss where the board can discuss those community requests during the next budget year and see what, if any, actions uh, the board would like to take. Uh, mm -hmm. I would also add that maybe, you know, I would like to suggest, and I'll be prepared to discuss that, uh, is maybe looking at revisiting on some of those community requests that we've received during the budget process, that whether or not we may be better suited, that it, because they have a, a look similar some of the requests that have come forward during the budget process year after year after year start to look like grant requests or similar to <coughs> any other grant program as you know that the board as part of economic development 
not necessarily have those types of requests be part of the budget process, but instead identify, you know, funds to be set aside to facilitate a grant program. And I thought with the nature of the community requests, I would like to, you know, discuss a potential proposal about creating uh, some type of a community grant program that would have the full process of applicants announcements, applications, review, and then coming before you to, you know, because our office is getting a lot of questions from people who submitted those, and I know you're getting yes. a lot of questions yeah. about, well, what's the next step in the process, you know, um, what's going to happen with our request, mm -hmm. and it's it's just, uh, it, it was going to be, it's an idea that I would just like to discuss with the board, and I thought it's a potential work session we and talk about the community requests and then talk about our process moving forward. Yeah, I think we have yeah. a great process in working for the for the grant program now. And um, whether we would do it or like to have one of our partners do it, I, I'm totally agree with that same kind of a, at least my own opinion, that same kind of process for community requests and community grants. Yeah, when, um, uh, Ken and I discussed this when we were on our, um, I think, Christian was on the call too, but this was our conversation um, earlier this week, and I thought that was a great idea. Um, I, I, I did an initial um, question into Abishah that was like, hey, um, we, we all, you know, I, I was careful to not speak for you, but I was like, I really appreciate the, the process that we've gone through with the business grants. Um, and we, uh, Ken and I talked about what this would potentially look like. And so I just wanted to give her kind of like a a heads up of that we might be borrowing some of her process. Um, but it's definitely different than a business, right? Totally. And yeah. I think that we, well, we can talk about this, but yes, I think yeah. that, that we have more reach into the community and understand what these nonprofits and these community requests really entail so that we can we can really give it some consideration. But I, I like having a separate process for it and talking about I it. Do Me too. I do think you're right, Commissioner. It's something that's really for community uh, service or community grant requests that don't earn economic development related with economic development, no matter what it is, mediators or whatever. I like, I, I definitely like that idea of having a different process. We can borrow everything we can from their process, yes. but using that same kind of mm -hmm. process. Yeah. So thank you for thank reminding you. me. I found the note, but it was very cryptic in my notebook. So That's right. That was a great segue. And I'll also look at it, and then I can come back and look at our work session schedule, just uh, recognizing yes. the challenges and the sure. kind of things. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Um, I think the, the rural, um, I mean, I don't, because I'm, I'm not a tech savvy person, I don't actually know the word, the difference between rural broadband and rural high speed internet. But I, I keep coming back whenever I talk to Abhishek about it. Okay, that's good. Is that I say, well, there's one thing to have infrastructure in the ground, um, but the people that I talk to, it's, it's there are equal numbers of people who also just simply can't afford what's currently available. Um, and so, you know, um, when Kathy Tate um, was part of a conversation, you know, it was clear that um, the providing adequate infrastructure was also part of providing. Um, access that was affordable if that makes sense sure. uh, because some sources of high-speed internet are very expensive in the rural areas well, if brought, you can get them if you can get the question and uh, john deets the general manager oh water, yeah light was on a bit you know city water nights are going to be putting in the next few years a pump station on the land and you yeah. heard me line all the way up to the airport mm -hmm. for a second filtration uh, plant and since they have and it all goes along county roads and the easements and if they're going to put 12 inch water pipe in the ground, they're going to put electrical conduit in the ground that they should at the same time put fiber in. So, where they have a break point where the vaults are, have another small vault. So, that hole from uh, south of Dayton, where the uh, pump station is, all the way up to New England Airport, would all be a fixed fiber, fiber loop. Because yeah. then, anybody online, Mac, or whoever is, and actually take off that fiber loop and start running their service as much cheaper because they don't have quite that much infrastructure. It's right. a good idea. Yeah, so along those lines, the conversation that um, Kathy Tate and Abhishek and Eric Anderson at SecCore and 
Carrie and I had, I, I was just on there for a very brief period of time, but um, uh, Kathy is going to um, apply to the, the fund, the, the grant program um, for, I think it's four, sep four separate projects um, that are engineered. I looked and I only, she said she has five, but she talked about four separate ones. Um, and each of them would be, is a, going to be a separate request um, to the fund, but that it allow to, it will allow their company to uh, build and install the access um, in, in a quick turnaround time because it's the end of December is when um, you have to be complete. Um, so she's looking for you know, help from all the parties involved, um, you know, the, the power company and the phone company to make sure she can get the, the projects done as quickly as possible. And we emphasized to her that, you know, we, we talked to a lot of students and a lot of families and a lot of school districts and that um, people are going to need it, you know, even before that. So the projects that she listed were um, uh, Whiteson um, was a, a strong uh, possibility because they have lines close by. Right, right um, but because there are only 40 households there, as far as she could tell, it's, it's not a strong ask mm -hmm. to the fund because it's a small group. Right. Um, and I reminded her that it's still a group that's lacking in quality access. So, um, and the next one was actually Grand Island. And so I did my, I'd like to declare a potential conflict of interest, um, but that's also a, a, a community that has challenges with internet access. But the one that, and then there was one um, Parma Lane, which is off of Riverside mm -hmm. is also another location um, where they're really close to high speed internet, but don't have it because it's in the county. And then the last one uh, is a very large area. And that's essentially between um, east of Amity all the way to Lafayette Highway. So the, the Eola Hills and all the rural Amity school district area. Uh, now, now it's like the Hopewell Community Center. Yes. With everything they do online and everything. I mean, that's almost for them to continue doing what they're doing. They need high speed internet. Right, and there's, um, I guess, one section, there's, a, there's a, a tower of theirs, and so there's a trunk line that goes to the tower, um, but right now they don't have the, the funding to install the infrastructure to split off to all the side roads, and so she's looking at that one because there's hundreds, she, as she said, there's hundreds and hundreds of households um, that are lacking in good internet in that particular area. Um, and they've already worked uh, with the, the Amity School District, so they have a good connection, a physical connection as well as a relational connection there. So that was one that I was very excited about uh, because of how big of a scope it is. Um, I have one other we'll question see. for yeah. you, and maybe it's for Ken too, um, regarding infrastructure for rural broadband. When we redo a city, like not just an old neighbor, when we do a redo a county road, we have to tear it up. We have to put new bridges in, whatever we have to do. Mm -hmm. Does our public works actually, uh, and they shouldn't put the fiber in the ground, but they actually make the provisions like we ought to do it to put the fiber in the ground? Because even though it may be empty, and there's several miles of empty fiber, fiber conduit in the mm -hmm. but if you have the conduit in the ground, at least it's not that expensive than to run the fiber through it. Right, right. And that's, that's an interesting question. I know that there, it's, um, it's been rare that a, a road is rebuilt in, in such a dramatic fashion that that would happen. But um, one that's coming up, and it was I saw it was just in the paper, the public notice or for the requests for bids for engineering is a section of uh, North Valley Road um, that's, uh, you've, you've probably been on the section that goes like this all the time. So you don't want to ride a bicycle. Well, that's all. Yeah, that's actually the whole thing. I think <laughs> this particular section is. I think it's between Ribbon Ridge Road and Albertson, um, and it's on soft ground right up against the hillside. Um, and that one is going to be uh, rebuilt. The proposal is to rebuild it, and that's part of the MIP. And so that might be a situation where it makes sense yeah, putting, to at least partner with sure somebody. Pretty cheap dropping empty right. Well, I. I think the, the challenging part of that would be the, the gas tax. Mm. Right. Yeah, and partnership. Companies because we have, you know, existing easements in our right of ways, and uh, but there yeah. may be some limitations on what 
what we can actually expend. Yeah, we'll, yeah, expend yeah. On that right. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, Ken, because you know mm -hmm. Wendy Valdez at PGE mm -hmm. has been, you know, she's very interested in rural broadband. It mm -hmm. could be a partnership in that area. Yeah. With PGE too. So I do know that um, based upon a conversation I had with a wireless provider um, recently who was looking for areas, that apparently is one area that they they focused on at the time as having um, a lack of access. So, yeah. Anyway, so I think it's just time that when Ken provides us that list, we can come up with panel with all just hear from the Oregon Broadband Office, yeah. hear from uh, Abishar Sencor, hear from Kathy T just to bring us all up to the date. Kind of, so we kind of know what direction we're all marching in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that um, brings me to the economic response team meeting, um, which I'm glad that you mentioned. Um, and that was uh, one where uh, Commissioner Pope led us off in a conversation where he explained how long he's been working to try to improve internet access in, in Polk County. Um, and uh, his hope was that uh, coronavirus relief dollars that come into his county can be used um, for um, in, in the next dispersal um, can be used specifically for um, improving internet access. And his concern was uh, first for um, his students that he doesn't want anybody to get left behind um, if they need to be uh, learning at home. Uh, and then the, the next component of that was that he, he was viewing um, high quality internet is very important to entrepreneurship in his county. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then the other component of that was that he said that it was uh, child care access was the other thing he wanted to focus on with his dollars. So, sorry. And then telehealth. Yes, telehealth. that's right. And um, actually, um, uh, Laura Byerly, who's the medical director for, G for Virginia Garcia, reached out to me the other day um, asking about, uh, she sent me that um, the same thing that I think that you did, which is grant deadline for broadband grants. Um, and she said, is there a way that uh, you can uh, consider telehealth uh, when, if, if anybody's applying for this? So we got her connected with Kathy Tate. Okay. And I think they're, they're talking about that, right? Because when we see mon uh, routine care visits going down, um, that's, that's worrisome, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Routine care is what helps people stay healthy. So right. yeah, have any of you other than myself gone through any telehealth visits with your doctor? No, I have I've not. Been, I've been through two now. Wow. And I've really been surprised how thorough it is. And the one, one at Oregon Clinic that I see was telling me they're actually coming up with devices now, USB devices that plug into your computer, that it's just like the little thing monitoring your heart rate. Mm -hmm. You plug it in and put your fingers on, they'll monitor your heart, heart rate, mm -hmm. they can take your oxygen, level they could do everything all remotely as part of telehealth they could show you your uh, ekg they can do everything mm -hmm. so it's really I amazing telehealth is mm -hmm. gonna be around big, big oh yeah time. oh yeah yes. yeah so i mean i think that um what uh what commissioner pope really his his comments in the the economic response team meeting um i felt like really echoed for a lot of concerns that people have in our community um and that, the, so that was really nice to, to realize that um, our counties really are very, um, very tightly woven. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see what, what happens with the funding. Right. But we'll keep an eye on it and maybe we'll be prepared to, to help spend it to increase access after a work session. Okay. So that was my Wonderful. announcement. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Ken. Yes. Um, it's actually okay. Um, just looking at, at calendars, um, we need, as you know, uh, we have negotiations underway. Mm -hmm. um, we need to schedule a, an executive session um, okay. with the board. Uh, but recognize we wanted to check your availability. Um, for next week, uh, Justin will be here filling in for me, but I'll be out of the office uh, next week. Um, but uh, just wanted to check your availability. I think we were looking at possibly Tuesday afternoon. Um, uh, I won't be able to make it Tuesday afternoon. That's when Candy has her knee surgery. Okay. okay. Um, That's a pretty good excuse. You're out all next week. I I am out Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. And it sounds like all day then. I'm guessing yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay. By the time I get her over there, we get her mm -hmm. on. 
but we just wanted to, and maybe we can we can reach out time. via email too if if we're not really ready to. No, I think we are. I mean, um, or we're ready. Justin's out Monday though, right? Yeah. Okay. But, do you think that you would be uh, available on Wednesday? My oh, schedule is pretty flexible on Wednesday, but he's out Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, oh! I thought you were gone the whole time, and Justin was filling in for you. Uh, Justin will fill in for me on Thursday for formal session. Oh, okay, but I know I'll be out on Wednesday, Thursday next week. Okay. And I know for me, usually I try to reserve when not schedule anything. Yeah. For usually it's for Mondays and Wednesdays, but. Mm -hmm. um, Monday is always good because I try not to schedule any meetings. I can't get out for a Monday. If, if Monday works for the board, I, you know, it works for me. Justin will be out. I, I think that we'd have sufficient time um, to be here. It's the it's it's either next Monday or the following Monday, the sixth, um, or the seventh. I have a couple of things that are scheduled on Monday, but I'm happy to shift them for this. And, and we're looking at the timing of some of our upcoming bargaining sessions. Yeah. And there's some important mm -hmm. uh, information or, or getting some consensus of the board. Yeah. yeah. I have something um, at 1030 and then at 2. Is there a way on the 29th? Would people be available? Is there anything in, in between? That's Monday. That? I can do that, that in between Maybe, time. Uh, any time from um, 12 to, to 2? Is that enough I'm, time? I'm going to try to bring up my uh, other calendar, not my board calendar, my total calendar. Make sure. Can't get anything. When is that? You said the 29th. Monday the 29th. Th that works for me, Commissioner. That work for you? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way they do it. Monday. 29th, Monday? Yeah, Monday morning. You're okay? Yeah. 12 you to be? 2. 12 to 2. 12 to 2. Is that? I mean, if we don't need that much time, that's well. Probably best to book it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Carolina. Hopefully, we won't need it. No lunch that day for you. Bring your lunch. Eat it here. Ground bag. I mean, do we want ground bag? Yeah, we can do a working bring a lunch too. Yeah. In room thirty-two. Probably, huh? Yeah. Probably best. Okay. Conference room is still not necessarily large enough to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fully open on this one. Yeah. Then we'll be prepared to have information on that. And then we'll get it noticed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nope. Okay. Oh, well, the season ends on Saturday. Yeah. It's already been decided. Champion's been crowned. It's true. For the eighth year in a row. Carolina, do you have anything? Okay. Well, with that, I will close this meeting of the Union County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. There's plenty of